Greetings, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Equity Guru Investor Roundtable. And we got a plum dandy for you today, a plum freaking dandy, because these guys are all excited. Look at them. Look at them. They're all excited. Uh, I'm Rob. That's uh, Galen down here in the basement with me. He's the guy that makes scones and stuff. What are you making today? Anything good? Whoopee. Whoopee. <laughs> Far corner is Chris, the guru himself, even though he's got his clothes on up there. Or, or should I say, well, whatever. And then Michelle is directly above us. He's also wearing his clothes and he's sitting in his vast vault of gold. Uh, we're going to talk about. He likes gold. But we're talking about silver. Today. I think Chris did a better gold finger or gold member uh, impression than I did yesterday. So that's good. They, they do call me silver member. Just don't oh, eat your skin, go. dude. Just don't eat your skin. That's something maybe we can use. Silver we could member. do the Girl Ives silver and gold song, but we won't. Uh, all right. It's Honey Badger Silver is one of them. Interim CEO Chad Williams in Toronto. We're going to talk about them. If you're interested, TUF on the Venture Exchange. Fortuna Silver Mines. Jorge Durant out of Vancouver. He's the CEO. That's FVI on the Toronto Exchange. Also on the Toronto Exchange is MAG, M-A-G, Silver. George Paspalis, I believe is his name, out of Vancouver. Those are the three we'll focus on, but we're talking sector and we're talking Bichette. Yep, but for sure. You know, so, we're not, uh, you know who we're not focusing on? Impact Silver. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't even going to say that. Because <laughs> they flew us out to freaking Mexico to shoot video of their mine, and then they're like, thanks for coming. No deal. <laughs> <laughs> hey, well, at some point, I would like to be talking about Arizo Arizona Silver, which is another company that fits in here with a $22 million market cap but cap. down the road at some point because they're an interesting property but let's go let's go yeah. up the shelf. Let's for go. sure i mean there's there's tons of silver companies and you know as chris mentioned that uh, we got flown down to mexico because that's where a lot of the big uh, mines are and believe it or not they're still mining the silver uh from some of those mines in mexico that the spanish um were mining back in what the 16th century uh, when they came over to wow. the new world. Man, those um, Spaniards sucked at the I mean, why would it go away? Why would it go away? It's still going to be there. It's still going to be there, yeah. The it's people still die. Be there. The people die, the silver doesn't. Silver doesn't. Silver is a hard asset, just like its big brother, gold. And, I mean, you know, you guys know I'm a big uh, fan of uh, silver. I'm adorning myself with some silver oh. jewelry here. I wish I took oh. out some of my silver bullion so i could show you some maple leaves and some uh silver eagles uh gangster, but gangster. silver is getting quite hot right it's all i think it's been hot since the whole wall street bets era um you know whenever you go to any mining conference there's always that one guy telling one of these big names to say that silver is going to be the biggest gainer for the year and when he does everyone stands up and starts cheering and i'm one of those guys as well um but i think uh silver is great for the long term just with gold as well and there's two ways to you know look at silver right there are some people that put it in the base metal camp with copper with nickel and of course you know the demand for silver is going to increase for clean energy and um, other green infrastructure projects do we have the supply perhaps not which is why there could be that demand and supply imbalance which we'll have to see more silver mines and silver discoveries really uh to bump up th that supply there or you can look at the other way and look at silver as a monetary metal um you know again following gold which it tends to do so silver does tend to follow the monetary metals in terms of price correlation rather than uh the base metals and again positives there right obviously look at the world right now uh we have some geopolitical stuff we have central banks uh, we have inflation so a lot of people want to run into um, hard assets and basically non-fiat as uh, non assets with gold and silver being the two sort of prominent monetary metals. Um, as you can see from my chart, you know, it has been a bit of a roller coaster. So I do want to say that right off the bat, silver is a very volatile metal. It's not for, uh, you know, the faint hearted and there's moves. Sometimes you'll see 4% moves. In, in a day, you know, not only up, but to, to the downside as well. And a lot of people call silver gold on steroids. And as you can see, uh, just recently, silver did have a nice move higher uh, to begin 2022. But uh, in, in the past few days, there has been basically an everything sell-off. So it's not just being gold and silver, but we're seeing sell-offs in the stock market. We're seeing sell-offs in cryptos and 
there's this fear trade that's that's back basically um you know um on the markets and money's running to the US dollar money's running into bonds and you know a lot of people are trying to make sense of what's going on here right and um i i do want to mention on the industrial metal side of course uh you know china is a big uh country that imports a lot of these base metals including silver and if you take a look at the chinese markets you know they've just been getting destroyed uh not many people have been talking about the big downfall in china of course you know we've heard about i think uh, shanghai um is still locked down i'm not sure if it's opened up again but it might still be locked down uh now they're talking about beijing might get another lockdown so obviously you know uh that demand from china is diminishing which could be impacting uh what a lot of the commodities are doing right now so keep that in mind and it does look like to me that we are going to see silver retrace back to that $22 zone big support area and what i see is a buying opportunity and uh you know multiple ways to play it right you can buy your physical bullion you can trade your contracts or play your futures you can buy your etfs or you can play the silver miners either the juniors and the explorers the producers and the big boys and i believe galen has some or well, he selected a company from basically each category here to share with us yes beautiful job of cross sectioning by the way there's two ways to look at silver you can look at it like this ooh or you can look at it like this. <laughs> how are you looking at it galen um <laughs> <laughs> Somewhat like that. All right. Um, there are l differing levels of risk that you have to undertake when you get investing into exploration because it is a risky business and it's costly. So you want to make sure you understand your own investor profile before you start stepping into these things. Three different levels that I'd like to think about. It's called the early stage level, mid-tier level, and the major level. Okay. Let's start with the early stage. Early stage would be Honey Badger Silver. And this is a company that has some properties both in Ontario, in the Thunder Bay Mining District, Silver District, and also in the Yukon. Uh, the, the big thing for these kinds of companies, everything they have is, is uh, closeology. Look, we got something, we think of something is there. Um, there's been historic stuff that has, has been there. There's been past producing mines that have done stuff on that property, um, but we're, we're hoping to repeat that success. We just haven't done that yet. We don't know if there's a deposit there. Uh, the best we can do is, is take, our, take our numbers off of somebody else's work. Um, Honey Badger is one of those guys. So what do you need to do when you look at these individuals? You gotta find out what the management's like. Is it a management that has a large track record of success? Do they have backing from major uh, institutional investors like Sprott? Um, Ross McElroy, all these other kinds of individuals, is there any kind of relationship to that? Because that'll give you some confidence because that's really what you need at this point in time to actually throw your money down. Now, if you're looking at a company at this size, it trades at eight cents and it has a market cap of about 14 million bucks, you really do have a large growth potential. Now, the one nice thing is that they're mining or trying to mine up in the Yukon, which, as Vishal has said on previous occasions, has a tremendous amount of, of high-grade uh, findings within its borders. Uh, so the grab samples from this particular project that they have, this Silver Mountain slash Mink property that they have up in the Yukon, is returning some pretty amazing assays. Now, this isn't telling you what's under the ground. This is telling you what they found sitting around around these 12 historic mines that, that are around this property. And we're talking in the neighborhood of 1,200 grams per ton. Now, a good gram per ton, as far as silver is concerned across the rest of the country, or the, the rest of North America, is probably around 45 to about 75 grams per ton. So if you're looking at 1,200, that's wow. some pretty tasty pickings. Now, if yep. they can repeat that under the ground, they might have some really good going on there. So here you go. When you're going to get looking into these guys, you're going to have to do your own due diligence. You're going to have to understand a little bit of geology, and you're going to have to really get in with your investment advisor, the person that really knows what they're doing, and figure out what your game plan is. Don't just throw your money willy-nilly because, unfortunately, with companies not necessarily like this, but companies at this caliber, at this stage, there's a tremendous possibility that it could go to zero. Um, now... I'm not going to say that this happens with this company because I think they've got some really interesting property selections. So that's one choice. Again, high risk, high growth. 
You want to move further down the scale and you want to keep yourself a little bit safer, but you want to still have a, an opportunity to make a little bit of profit down the end or share value growth. Uh, the other company I would have to say would be Fortuna Silver Mines. Now, this company has uh, got producing mines in its roster already. So it's already making cash. It also has uh, a, a property in development. It has four producing mines right now. It has a fifth property in development, or not in development. They're building the mine. It's not in development. They're building the mine. Then, to top everything off, to add the growth value to this particular stock, they have a selection of properties, seven of them, I believe, with two being in their early, or sorry, advanced stage, getting into development. But they range all the way from early stage and up. So this gives you, again, a growth potential. Now, this company trades, at, I believe, at 4 or $5 a share. So you still have some room to move. It's not going to move just on the finding of one deposit. It will, however, move on the production of another mine. So you know that if they keep building their repertoire, sorry, their, their portfolio, then you will actually gain more value with your share, doll, or share money. So this is, this is one that you can look at for something that you can save for retirement for, but also have an opportunity to build a little bit of a nest egg on top of that as the company builds its own share value. Now, hey, now while, you're, while, while you're blazing through those, let's just remind people that first one, Honey Badger, that had the very small cap is TUF on the Venture Exchange, TUF. That's the one you're saying high risk, do yep. your dealie. This last one is Fortuna Silver. They are FVI on the Toronto Exchange, FVI on the Toronto Exchange. And then we're going to talk, you're also going to talk about Mag Silver, which is Well, Mag. thanks for giving that one away. Great spoiler. So, <laughs> spoiler alert, Mag Silver on the Toronto Exchange, MAG. Uh, Sorry about that. No worries. All right. Drum roll. Drum Mag roll. would be what you consider to be a major. This is a company, as you can see from the uh, the website pictures, it's a pretty massive enterprise. Uh, they don't have a lot in terms of actual exploration. They don't really need it. They've got all the cash and everything going into production and, 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 produ and doing that. If they want to, they'll buy a smaller company. This is how they grow. Hmm. This company is a retirement plan kind of investment. You're not going to see a huge growth on this at all. However, you are going to be assured that for the most part, there's going to be money coming through the door and you're not going to lose your cash. And as silver gets more value, as it will, uh, then your your investment will grow as well. So, Is this a dividend thing? Not, uh, yet. not yet. Not yet. No, not yet. Not yet. Just checking. No, no worries. Um, so this would be a, a something that you'll be looking at to slot into your RRSP portfolio, if you know what yeah. I mean. You're looking, looking to open this up when you're 65 and go, wow, I'm glad I put some dollars down on that. Take uh, a look at some of these names that already put dollars down on that. BlackRock Asset Management, Sprott, Eric Sprott himself, Van Eck. First Eagle, we're talking about big boys here. JP Morgan's there too. There we go. <laughs> Those bastards. Hey, they know what they know where the cash is. I can't fault them for that. So yeah, if you're wanting to get into a, a retirement play where you don't have to worry about where your dollar's going, you you want to make sure that you're going to get it back at least. These are the guys to start putting your money into. You're not going to get a lot of shares out of them because you're paying about I think what is it. Twenty dollars, eighteen bucks a share. Yeah. yeah, so it's 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 still not as expensive as the most expensive shares out there in terms of of, of silver majors, but if you're talking going from five to to I think it was f uh, fourteen, and then to uh, this at eighteen. Um, Ooh. Sorry, sorry, eight cents to five to eighteen. You're 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 jumping up pretty wildly in terms of what you can put down and and buy in terms of shares. So there you go. That's me. Good cross. Good cross section. Well done. Thanks, uh, Chris Perry. What do you think of all this silver? Well, you know, I like me some silver. Um, of these three companies, though, I think one thing that's really interesting to note, as has been mentioned, uh, Honey Badger is the smaller company, thus a bit more prone to risk. That's that's well and good. You could lose 100% of your investment. The thing with the smaller companies, though, is that you're not limited to 100% profit if things go well. You can have many hundreds of percent. So for mine, the risk that you could lose your money is definitely valid. And a lot of the smaller explorers, that's what happens. But the limit that you're going to lose, unless you're playing really silly games on the exchange, is your outlay. Uh, but the, the the payback for things going well can be exponential. And to show that 
if uh, we could look at the three year of the honey badger silver stock chart, you'll find that three years ago it was around a three cent, two cent stock. It lifted a little bit, it had a bit of a high in 410, but right now it's at eight cents. So if you're going for, a, let's say, a three cent stock to eight cents in three years, that's a pretty good basically doubling of your money each year. Um, now, if we switch across to Fortuna Silver, we can go back 15 years on this stock chart. And what you'll find is 15 years ago, it was 375. Today, it's around five. For 15 years, as an investment to go from 375 to 520, man, that's not much of a return. Like, yes, it's had big highs in that time. It's also had lows. But to, to look at taking 15 years and only getting back 50, 60% on your money, right. not so great, right? And if we do the same with Mag Silver, we can go back 15 years there and you'll find it was 15 bucks back then dropped around to about 750 and now sits around 22 or 21. So if even if you were buying it at that 750, you're, you've, you know, you've doubled your money once and then doubled your original stake again. So to take 15 years of investing in the trusted one, the big one that you would put in your RSP, but to only get a, a portion of the return that you would have got on three years with the little guy Honey Badger, to me, it, it doesn't necessarily mean rush out and put all your money on Honey Badger, and it certainly doesn't mean there's anything wrong with the other two companies, but it does mean that in order for you to double your money, you've got to, on uh, MAG, you've got to take that company to a $3 billion market cap instead right. of a $1 billion market cap. On, on Fortuna, you've got to get it to, I think, a $2 million, billion market cap instead of one. On Honey Badger, you've got to get it to 28 million from the 14 million that it's already at, right? And and realistically, um, all that's got to happen for that to happen is a couple of good drill holes, a few a few good results, maybe a little interest from a major, progressing this thing along in, in any sort of real manner should bring you to that 28 million dollar level. So where's my money most likely to double? It's going to be in that little guy. Yeah. Now, obviously, not every little guy is cut from the same cloth. They're not all great investments. And as Galen said, you know, you've got to do your due diligence, figure out who's behind it, figure out what they've done before. Do these guys raise money to go play golf or do they raise money to stick holes in the ground? But for mine, by and large, I'm looking to rest a little bit of my money in those RSP stocks because over time, they will come good. But man, I, I want to cleave off a portion of my portfolio cash sure. for these, you know, ride or die babies who maybe they don't in the end amount to anything and they, they do fall back to zero, but they may have a bit of a run in the time in between then where they go from eight cents to 24 cents to 32 cents and fortunes are made. So for mine, uh, silver's always going to be there. It's always going to be something people want to buy. Yeah. How you get into silver is the important thing. Yeah, yeah. no, it's good points that are made by Chris because you know um, the, the costs too, right? I think we have to factor that is that in as well. And silver is very volatile, as we mentioned. Whenever it does see big pops up, I mean, you know, the highest was almost uh, just under fifty bucks uh, U.S. dollar back in what was that, two thousand eleven, and then uh, yeah. you know we didn't hold that price, right? So great for the miners to mine at that price, but, uh, you know, price has to stick around there and uh, it just never did that. But uh, a lot of the, I guess we can say the contrarians or uh, people who are betting on the inflation and stuff do believe that this might be the time where silver prices are sticky. They are, they're permanent. They could be, um, you know, higher for longer, which uh, would be great for some of these miners. Uh, talk about the charts, and I'm going to ha have you throw in an extra one at the very end just for a very quick glance, but maybe go in the order that uh, that Galen took us in here. Yep, yep, for sure. So, you know, we started off talking about the price of silver, and as I said, it does look like we might be seeing that big $22 zone uh, targeted once again. And why do I say that's a big $22 zone? Because we've talked about this in previous silver shows, maybe months ago, maybe even a year ago, but this $22 zone is a weekly support level that's been holding since September 2020. And we've had multiple uh, spikes 
from that zone. And just recently from 2021, September 2021 to, to, to now, we've had at least three or four tests at that $22 zone. So there is a chance we could be seeing, um, you know, a fall in silver back to 22. I am watching maybe this interim support that uh, could be actually tested uh, in, in the next few days here at just under 2350. Um, it seems like there's some interim support there. So we're going to have to watch and see if, if that, you know, if, if the buyers do step in. Um, but a lot of it depends on what the U.S. dollar is going to be doing, what the fear is and all that kind of stuff. So I'm just going to say be prepared for that $22 support level on silver, which does mean that some of these plays that we're going to look at um, could see the lower bounds of their range or even break that uh, to, to see lower prices on the chart. So uh, 22, big focus point on silver, and I think that will be a good area to look at uh, maybe some producers and explore, see where they're at. Uh, if we start off with Honey Badger, we can see here uh, since August of 2021, really we've been um, in this range here between uh, five and a half cents to the downside and about nine cents to the upside, and we're just waiting for that breakout uh, in either direction. Um, you know, obviously, if you're a bull, you want that breakout above nine cents. Uh, but as I said, if silver does fall to 22, I am sort of more leaning towards the lower end um, of the support for now. But all of that can change, you know, with a fundamental news piece from the company itself, uh, particularly to do with uh, drill results or something like that. So with, for, for Honey Badgers, just keep an eye out on this um, range that is developing. For Fortuna in May, you're going to see that the charts look very similar. And, uh, you know, I'll, I'll quickly just show you the Silver Miners ETF, which is SIL. And you can sort of see the structure is, is uh, quite similar there, um, where we are breaking above what some would say was a decent little uptrend channel here uh, that you can see connected really nicely. And we've seen multiple bounces from there. And it does look like, um, you know, we are going to see a bit more downside, just as silver is also going to be seeing some downside there. So I would be keeping my eye out on the $4 zone. You know, I, you see here I have 399 but I would say $4 is a nice sort of support zone. And we can maybe see that, and hopefully that coincides with silver touching or tagging that $22 support zone. And then finally, you know, very similar on Meg. And actually, you can see here I've drawn uh, a decent support zone here that's held multiple times. Some people might bring it down here to the 17 zone. But uh, as you can see, uh, it might be uh, a bit more downside here on Meg Silver, especially if we break below this $18 zone before uh, silver prices maybe take a bit of a, uh, you know, further dump down to $20. So um, as I said, you know, expect lower moves here in silver, but this just provides us with an opportunity betting for uh, a long-term um, move in, in the silver market and the silver juniors and explorers and miners will follow. And that bet, again, two ways to look at it, right? If you're betting on the industrial demand with solar panels and all that kind of stuff, then we're going to need uh, more supply of silver, which is good for the miners and the explorers. Or, of course, there's that monetary aspect with, uh, uh, you know, the, the, the demise of fiat currency and the crazy central bank policies that are, uh, uh, you know, around the globe right now. And hard assets are where you want to be. So I think there's still a long-term bullish case for silver. And this fall in the prices right now has to do more with, you know, maybe the ongoings in China and this whole fear and volatility that's uh, taking hold right now, seeing money run into the U.S. dollar and seeing money run into uh, bonds. Did you um, punch up FVI on the Toronto Exchange? Yes, this was it, FVI. Oh, yeah. oh that was it there. Yep. All right. uh, can you punch up uh, AZS, which is Arizona? The ones I Arizona know. Silver Exploration. Oh, Ooh, so take a look at that. That's a bit different compared to... Different deal, eh? They must have had some nice news just recently because we've seen a good pop in the beginning of March. What is that? Uh, that is a nice 77% move in... Uh, from March 1st up to the highs here on March 22nd. So there must have been some good news there. Um, it does look like though that uh, maybe the, the pro profits are being taken and um, that- They're settling. Yeah, that Arizona silver might also drop here as well with um, 
um, fall in silver. But I would be watching this 35 zone. I think that's where you could find some support, which uh, has been quite supportive in the past. And if I scroll out, no, it's not all-time highs. But, uh, you know, I think that's that's a pretty good breakout, though, at around that 35 cent zone. So they're, uh, they're doing some right things. I wonder what that news is, what caused this uh, giant pop. Here. Cash influx. Cash influx. Uh, uh, not sure. Uh, Galen, you go first. You got 7,500 bucks to spend on silver if you want. Well, basically, um, I feel good about everything I've talked about for the most part. So I would most likely just spread it evenly across the board. Uh, 2,500 on mag just to have something as, you know, there and there. Uh, 2,500 on Fortuna for just a little bit of growth, but a lot of security. And then 2500 because what the hell on Honey Badger yeah. and it's eight cents. <laughs> like, Jesus, it's probably going to be, you know, if yeah. it hits 30, I'm, I'm, I'm yeah. laughing. So I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do the 75. Yeah, I just want to interject here quickly on Meg. I should just say that, um, you know, Meg is like, this is like one of the largest silver grade assets ever found uh, yeah. in a long time. And they're not even at 100% production just yet. Like they're still in the very early stage, beginning stage, just getting the project going. And, you know, they're already trading at $18, right? So it's, uh, it could be telling, uh, you know, what happens when these guys go into full production when they're fully geared up and ready to go. So I think uh might be an exciting one for the long term. Yeah, especially if they're on the down right now. Chris, how much? Well, on the uh, the honey badger side, because we know the honey badger don't give a shit, um, I'm, I'm saying we might put three grand on that thing and, and have a bit of a whirl. Uh, the other two for me, uh, you know, uh, there's stability there, but stability is not always the thing you want. Sometimes you want volatility, and I think that maybe uh, the the big money – Certainly, you're finding some some interest in MAG over the last 12 months, but um, there's a lot of up and downs there. I, I really want the launch that comes from a young explorer hitting something good and jumping from seven or eight cents to 30 cents. Um, and those like me that invest in the young startup explorers, you, you've got to understand that we're as likely to jump out after news as we are to jump in before it. Um, the, 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 there's a lot of churn in early stage explorers, right? There are guys that want to go in super early and play the numbers that there's going to be a big percentage bounce. There are those that are going to wait until they see some draw results so that so they've got a better idea that something's coming. There are those that wait until you're deep into the producing mine process and got all your permits and done your PEA, and you got your 43101. I'm, I'm the guy at the beginning there who says from right. 8 cents to 12 cents, I'm in. From 12 cents to 16 cents, I'm taking out my original stake and letting the profits ride. And if it starts swinging back downwards, I'm out. I'm on to the next thing. That's pretty much the honey badger crowd right now. The volume is stable across across the bottom of the last six months. Um, and, and I, you know, but any one morning you could wake up to some news that could shotgun that thing up. So, and it takes a lot of news to move Fortuna a lot more news still to move mag. Those are more your, uh, as, as Galen said, your RSP companies. Put it in there, lock it away, don't even think about it unless the price of silver crashes. Uh, so for me, 3K on Honey Badger, um, you know, hey, maybe throw 500K down on the other two and never think about it again until you retire. 500k? You mean 500k? 500 dollars. Oh, $500. Yeah. Oh, okay. like, whoa! Okay. When did I get 500k to play? <laughs> I, I, I don't know. know. I was going to ask you. I was here. It's not me. Like, whose account's that coming out of? <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> Michelle. <yours. laughs> Certainly not mine. So Michelle, you're, you're adjusting for inflation, I think. That, so would, be a, uh, that would be a fantasy account. In my <laughs> Uh, VV, what do you got? Yeah, so, you know, I am going all in. There's just different ways to play it, right? Obviously, you can you can be someone like me uh, that can buy the physical bullion as well um, and also buy the royalty and streamers that aren't just silver-focused but gold-focused. But if we're just focusing on these three companies here, um, I, I'm, 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 I really like May just because, you know, these guys are – an up-and-comer, in my opinion. I know the market cap is very crazy right now, even though they're not fully produced. But um, once they produ the fully once they go into full production, 
uh, I think they're going to be one of the, the, the highest grade silver miners um, on the planet. And, you know, big names are already uh, holding the stock for the long term. You know, you have your BlackRock, uh, who are, I didn't even know they're into mining. I thought they were just buying real estate in Florida, but you got BlackRock there now, uh, you know, one of the largest um, uh, hedge funds in the world. Um, so I'm going to have a different approach. Uh, I personally like more the advanced stage products, uh, projects. Uh, looking for, you know, longer term growth and hopefully, you know, one day when maybe I'm a bit more older, Meg, Silver and Fortuna will be paying dividends uh, because the price of silver is going to be so high that they're just making money like mad. And, you know, hey, here we go. We'll throw some dividends now to you guys. Um, so I'm going to do 3K in Meg, 3K in Fortuna and then the remainder 1500 in Honey Badger and you know, basically echoing what Chris said, right? If, if we are very bullish on silver, um, I believe the juniors, right? All these silver juniors will also jump up, especially if silver just takes off, right? Because we've seen this with uh, some of the gold plays as well that obviously move in correlation with uh, the price of the commodity itself. Um, and I think, you know, if, if silver and gold are going to be the next big, uh, you know, I hate to say it, but like, you know, people like to compare everything now to crypto moves. <laughs> but if that is the move, then uh, I think some of these junior and explorers are going to be seeing some insane moves in the next uh, couple of months to, to years uh, as craziness basically ensues on the fiat currency side. So have some money in some of the juniors as well. Um, but I, I just tend to like a bit, I like to invest my money in more of the advanced stage projects itself. We were about 4K away from hearing well, but we can't give you full bell treatment because we're a little short. Uh, if Chris was the frozen Chris today, we would have gotten there today. Oh, yeah. Frozen, he, Chris. That frozen Chris throws frozen his money Chris. around like nobody's business. Oh, my God. He throws around. He invests in swampland. Damn bloody cold in this office, I'll tell you. <laughs> <laughs> a sweater on, too. Uh, all right, kids. We uh, First of all, we'll give you the disclaimer before we even tell you the names again, because uh, we're just going to tell you right now that you have to do some homework and some research and look at other things and read up on it and all that, because what we tell you, we can't guarantee. And past performance does not guarantee future results as well. So uh, don't uh, no promises here, but uh, just a lot of good information that you can utilize in your research and decision making process. Uh, the three comps we were talking about, in case you're curious, was Tough TUF on the Venture Exchange. That's Honey Badger. That's the little cap. Uh, that's Chad Williams is the CEO in interim CEO in Toronto. We have Fortuna Silver Mines in Vancouver under Jorge Durant. That is FVI uh, on the Toronto Exchange. They would be kind of the middle one. I'm using the uh, Galen uh, demonstra hand demonstration of uh, mama bear, papa bear, baby bear. And then there's Mag T, which is Mag Silver, M-A-G, on the Toronto Exchange, George Paspalis out of Vancouver. That would be a big, big one, big cap. How many cap? What's the cabbage there? Uh, uh, 1.7, if I remember. Oh, my God. A billion, a billion. Wow. We've got a big swing there. Okay, that's it. Uh, oh fantastic. Yeah. We'll come back and be talking more silver in the not so distant future. Resource is always a lot of fun. Until next time, for Galen and for Shell and Chris, I'm Rob. We'll see you next time on the Equity Guru Investor Roundtable. <laughs>